Saudi Arabia is the world's largest producer of desalinated water. In our next report, we take you inside the world's biggest water desalination facility. Saudi Arabia has shocked the American scientists by turning its vast deserts into luscious farmlands. This is Saudi Arabia. It is the 14th largest country by land area, with an area of 2 million square kilometers. But 95% of the kingdom is a hot, dry desert with lots and lots of sand. It's also one of the few countries in the world with not even a single permanent river. You're also looking at a country where it rains less than 150 millimeters on average each year, all year long. But if you zoom in on the country, you will see something that is totally unexpected, arable land. In Saudi Arabia, there's a network of farmland where agriculture does well. This lets farmers grow many different kinds of fruits, which is unusual in the hot desert. Currently, the country has 35,000 square kilometers of land that can be farmed, which is more than three times the size of Qatar and bigger than the Netherlands. But in the early 1960s, Saudi Arabia had only 400 square kilometers of land that could be farmed. How did the oil-rich country increase its arable land so quickly? In this video, we look at the clever ways Saudi Arabia has turned its desert into a farmland oasis. Over the last 30 years, Saudi Arabia's agricultural development has been amazing. Large expanses of desert have been converted into agricultural fields, which is a significant achievement in a country that receives only around 4 inches of rain per year, one of the lowest rates in the world. Outside of the Fertile Crescent, farming in the Arab East is a constant battle between man and nature. Most of the Arabian Peninsula, which is one of the driest places on Earth, doesn't get much rain, and much of what does fall runs off into the desert or evaporates quickly. Even so, Saudi Arabia, which is the largest and driest country on the peninsula, is making some of the most innovative and important agricultural changes in the Arab world right now. The Arabian Peninsula is more than a million square miles in size and has almost no permanent rivers or streams. Its southern part is covered by the harsh, empty quarter, one of the largest deserts in the world. So, until modern technology made it possible to drill deep into the ground for well water, farming in Saudi Arabia had to be limited to places where water was close to the surface, like dry riverbeds or natural springs. Where there was water, though, there was a lot of farming. In the southwest, for example, farmers started growing and exporting coffee in the 16th century. At Al Hasa Oasis, which is one of the oldest in the world, people have been growing the important date palm for hundreds of years. Until not too long ago, the date palm was one of the most important sources of food in Arabia. Alfalfa, wheat, barley, sorghum, rice, and millet were also grown by farmers in the past. With the first attempts to find oil and the introduction of modern drilling technology, traditional farming in the eastern province changed, and later, so did the way people ate. And now, with a lot of money coming in from oil and a government that wants to make farming better, almost every farm in the kingdom is constantly changing. Experts at Mastock, which runs 600 farms in Europe, believes there is great potential in Saudi Arabia. They have demonstrated this belief by purchasing a 30% stake in four of the farms they operate and by managing the two other farms on a profit-sharing basis. In partnership with the Saudi government, their newest and biggest project is a dairy farm with 8,000 cows in Harad. To bring the oasis back to life, irrigation experts built a total of 820 miles of concrete viaducts that weave in and out of the palm groves to bring fresh water to a total of 40,000 acres of land. They also built a network of 900 miles of drainage canals and new roads to make it easy for farmers to get to their fields. Because of this, the middle of the L-shaped oasis is now a huge garden with 30 different kinds of plants, including vegetables and fruits. These plants grow in cool corridors between the tall trunks of date palms. Around its reclaimed edges, strong, young palms have taken root, and lush green alfalfa spreads out toward the protective swaths of tamarisk trees. The space between the swaths is set aside for range land. More importantly, farmers who left their land because of sand and salt are moving back to it today. One important thing that helped Al Hasa win was that farmers and landowners had to adjust to new rules, which they didn't always want to do. Landowners where the 35 springs came up, for example, used to control the water supply and weren't always happy with the current system, which gives free water to each farmer based on their needs. The Al Hasa Irrigation and Drainage Authority took a quiet and simple approach to teach farmers how to use new methods. Instead of trying to get the farmers to read textbooks, the authority showed them locally made films 
and set up demonstration fields among the Oasis Fanner's plots. And to get people to change, the authority gave prizes to farms that were run better. At first, the farmers were slow to respond. You can't change in a day what you've done and done wrong for years. But by 1978, the reclamation project was definitely moving forward, and the authority had started to let farmers use the new land. Some of it will, of course, go to fans in the area. But as part of a plan to make farms more productive, most of the new land will be farmed by foreign companies with experience farming on a large scale. To get these kinds of businesses, the authority offers incentives like free water and infrastructure paid for by the government. But the main reason is that people in the oil-producing eastern province want fresh food. This is because the kingdom's huge five-year development program is expected to increase the population by a lot by 1980, when huge industrial complexes that are now being built will start to work. Aramco recently set up a 300-acre mechanized demonstration farm to help the government improve agriculture in the eastern province. It hopes to grow 8 million pounds of fresh produce per year on the farm, which will help meet some of Aramco's needs and the needs of nearby communities. The farm will also teach Saudi farmers how to use mechanized techniques. Even though the dusty, dead-looking soil of that farm didn't look very hopeful in January 1978, experts who were there were full of hope. Aramco has also put in place a farming method in Duran called hydroponics, which lets plants grow without soil. Instead of soil, the plants grow in plastic tubes with running water in which plant food is dissolved. The hydroponics experiment, which is a pilot project, is already producing crops. Tomatoes and cucumbers, which are grown in three greenhouses with humidity controls, have already been picked eight and five weeks after they were planted, with impressive results. In another part of the eastern province, 13 miles northwest of Duran, at Katif, Saudi Arabia's farming experts solved another problem caused by too much water in the fields. Artesian wells provided enough water for Katif, which was the second largest oasis in the eastern province. However, because the water flow was constant and uncontrolled, and because the drainage system wasn't good enough, the land became flooded, salts rose to the surface, and many farms stopped producing or were abandoned. Also, farmers were drilling more wells because they had access to drilling rigs. This made the artesian pressure drop, and people worried that the free-flowing water might run out. As in the case of Al Hassa, it was the Saudi government that stepped in to save Katif. They did this by closing off dozens of uncontrolled wells, installing a full irrigation and drainage system, and reclaiming more than 10,000 acres of land that could be used for farming. This made sure that the oasis's economy would continue to grow in the future. Water is the most important thing in agriculture, of course, but because it rains very little or not at all in most parts of Saudi Arabia, the problem is especially bad. In Al Hassa and Katif, for example, almost all of the water comes from aquifers, which are geological layers of permeable rock and sand that hold water and are 300 to 1400 feet below the surface. Recent water searches have found several huge new aquifers with a lot of water, but Saudi Arabia has been careful because the growth of agriculture depends almost entirely on these limited natural underground water resources. After doing a lot of research on underground water resources, for example, the kingdom recently made a national water plan and a conservation program. The plan sets aside natural water supplies from aquifers for farming and will meet domestic and industrial needs with man-made supplies, like desalinizing seawater. To reach this goal, the original budget for water in the five-year development plan has been nearly doubled from $9.3 billion to $19.3 billion. Most of this money will go toward increasing the capacity of desalination. In contrast, the budget for agriculture is only $11 billion. Officials say that this is because there are strict limits on how much money this sector can take in. The most important thing about the program is that the number of irrigated acres will go from 288,000 to 448,000. In order to do this, a lot of dams have been built or are being built in places where it rains, especially in the mountainous Asir province near the coast of the Red Sea. In Asir, which is in the southern monsoon area, heavy rains have been flooding the Tiama coastal plain for hundreds of years. So, the government built a large dam across the Wadi Jizan a few years ago. The Jizan Dam, which is 1,000 feet long and 133 feet high and can hold up to 18 billion gallons, has helped stop seasonal floods that used to come down the Wadi, washing away topsoil, uprooting plants and seeds, drowning animals, and destroying homes on the plain below. The water is also collected and stored for later use by the Jizan Dam. So, 
the Tihama Plain could become the richest agricultural area in the kingdom, especially when a series of interlocking irrigation and development projects are finished. With this kind of help, farmers in the area are expected to improve and increase their production of sorghum, which is a key food and a source of animal feed, as well as grow more crops. Cotton, for example, is grown on a trial basis, and there are plans to bring in corn, peanuts, sugarcane, and exotic fruits like papaya and mango. Other plans call for the building of nurseries to grow eucalyptus and tamarisk trees, which are important tools in the world's fight to stop deserts from spreading. At the other end of the kingdom, near the Great Nafud Desert, is a huge steep land that used to be great for grazing but is now in a bad way because of droughts. About 37% of the people in the area are nomads, and like everywhere else in the kingdom, special care is being taken to include these Bedouin tribes in the national ceremony. Since water is important for both growing livestock and growing crops, the Saudi government is doing everything it can to get the most out of its limited supplies. Studies are being done, for example, to see if sewage water from cities could be reused in agriculture. We can't let a single drop of water go to waste. This is the motto of Saudi Arabian people, and they're doing their best to establish greenery in the desert areas. That pretty much wraps this video up, guys. Thanks for watching. So, what are your thoughts about Saudi Arabia's astonishing transformation from deserts to green farmlands? Share with us in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to this channel with a bell notification if you enjoy watching our content. We upload some awesome stuff here which you will most certainly enjoy. Hit a like on this video and leave a comment below. See you guys in the next one.